hello guys welcome to solving solutions on the bond channel where i get solutions to all your solving problems it's nice having you in class again today how have you been on today's tutorial we are going to take um, a step further to try to analyze the temporal characteristics of the data that we have um, acquired now you can remember that um you can remember that when we got the data we got it for five years right good so we have 2019 20 21 22 and 23 right good so what we want to do now is that we want to use them qgis to visualize the the rate of change or maybe the amount of rainfall that has occurred in the different years right good so if you come back to qgis we have um, a layer called um, data temporal so if we open up the attribute table of that data you are going to see the coordinates but there's something very interesting that we have done now instead of having the different years as different columns we have now formatted our data so that we have a single column that shows the years right good so and then we now have their corresponding rainfall and then we also have a field for date now the first field um stores the date as a text and then the second field for date stores the date what as um, a date um, depending on the data type we are talking about the data type now yeah for data type is just a test string and then yeah for data type it's what it did so we are going to use this um, date when we get to the um, temporal aspect where we need to show the um, the amount of rainfall that has occurred um, over the years right good so this particular aspect of the tutorial is actually very important because unlike um, what we have here that um, shows the rainfall value of um, the different years right good in the QGIS where we have it as um, data temporal we have reformatted it so it's actually very important now before we proceed let us try to work on the symbology of our data so we right click and then we come to properties then instead of using a um, single symbol we can decide to use categorized or graduated right good so let's use them um, graduated on today's tutorial and then the value we want to use for the graduated should be should be the rainfall it means it is going to categorize the data set we have based on the values that we have um, under the rainfall right good so we are going to use an um, equal interval and then remember you can always increase the classes from maybe 5 to 10 to even 100 or any number of class that um, you want to use right good so on this tutorial let's just stick with 10 and then another very important um, parameter to note is the method if you don't want to use color you can use size so we prefer to use a um, color right good so when we use color we need to select a color ramp that would we'll use toward to um, visualize the symbols so let's use a um, turbo and then you can see that from the table we have um from the values rather we have um three five nine two to three seven um eight zero that's the lowest category and then we now have um five two eight zero to five four six eight right good so these are like the rainfall values these are actually the rainfall values classified into six classes using what this um equal interval mode right good so i have not fixed all of these and then the color ramp is okay by us we just um, apply and then we click on okay so if we try to take out some of these um, background data so that we have only this and then we drop this down we are going to see that um, we have what different classes right now let's come to the more important part now that we have fixed this we can decide to right click come to properties and then we select temporal now this temporal aspect we now um, click on this dynamic temporal controller and then for the configuration we see we have a single field that has date and time or date or time right good so we have a single field that contains um, date or time so we select that then um, the limit actually includes the start and then exclude what the end right good and that's the default then we now come to the field and then if we use the drop down you are going to see that what the date underscore has been um, selected because that is the field that contains what the date type right good 
and then that contains the date and then the type that was used is actually what date so it was easily selected then we can decide to apply and then click on ok so you now see that um, there is a temporal layer icon close towards the layer that we are working with good so we now come up to the temporal controller panel to bring it up I haven't done that we can decide to click on what this um, animated um, temporal navigation now when we get to this point we decide to set to full range now when we set it to full range we have um, indicated the start which is um, 2019 to the end which is what 2023 right good and then we have said it should be going at um, maybe one hour interval but we need that actually one year interval because the data set is actually um, yearly and by default you can see that um, the animation has started taking place so it shows you the amount of rainfall at those different points in the different years right good so before we proceed further we can decide to pause and then we now have to include a text that actually shows the year that is being displayed right good so we come to view and then under decorations we come to the title label right good we need to enable the title label however the title label that we are going to use would um, require us to write a script so we insert or edit an expression now for the script we have it somewhere around here so we do ctrl a ctrl c and then we paste it here now this script was actually gotten from a um, special thoughts right good so we click on ok and then for the font okay we have times new roman we have 25 that's okay by us and then we can decide to change this to red and then we click on ok for the background bar color which is the um the bar that will contain the text let's uh, make it um, completely transparent or let's just make it white and then for the placement let's see if we can keep it somewhere at the bottom center okay let's keep it at the bottom right right good so these are some other parameters you can decide to modify if you want to so i will fix all of these we can just um, apply you now see we have um 21 somewhere around there right good so it shows that currently it is displaying the um, the temporal characteristics of the data in 2021 so we click on ok now when you have fixed that you can decide to come back to press play and then when you press the play the animation continues now the loop is selected here which means that when it gets to the end it will have to continue so you now see the amount of rainfall that has occurred over the years at the different point right good based on the color scale we have here or based on the scale we have here you know that when it's a bit bluish it's lower and then when it gets to this um, be dark red um, coloration it sees it seems to be higher right good or it is actually higher so we believe them um, we have shown you using this rainfall data trying to get more insight from when it was like this having the the coordinates the longitude the latitude and then the rainfall value for the different years up to when we modified it to this particular format that contains a single field that um, has the years and then has the rainfall and then we now introduce a new field that um, has the date as a date type and finally we have now successfully um, automated right good the um, temporal characteristic of our data using the temporal controller of um, QGIS. Now if um, by chance the rate at which it is being displayed is very fast you can click on this um, yellowish button and then you see the frame rate right good so it's actually um, one that's one frame per second you can decide to reduce it maybe or increase it as the case may be so if it's fast it was actually one 
so you can decide to make it maybe 0 0.5 or thereabout if that's okay by you when you do that you can come back and then you continue the playing so if you also want to maybe save this particular animation that um, you have created you can click on what save right good so when you click on this save icon it gives you the export map animation window when the export a map animation window opens you click on the output directory good so we have a folder called temporal and then we have our output here so it actually requires what a folder because we are going to have um, different um, images for the different um, years that um, we are actually studying so we select that folder and then for the extent we can calculate from the temporal um, layer that data underscore temporal right then um, the output width the output height that's um, the width and height of what the pngs that um, will be displayed then for the temporal settings it starts from 2019 to what to 2023 right good and then the frame length is actually what one year right so that's what we need so i haven't fixed this um, export map animation parameter we click on save so we can decide to use this link to open the output you can now see what the different years of study right good so you see that's um 2019 that's um 2020 that's 2021 and that's 2022 right good so it's output shows you the amount of rainfall as it occurred in the different years right good so that's 2020 that's um 2021 that's 2022 then you still come back to 2019 so if you have um, any app maybe an online tool or something that can help you convert this your jpeg to um, a gif so that it will now be like a continuous display you can just proceed to doing that right so thanks for coming to class we hope um, we have provided solution to this particular gis or remote sensing or surveying related problem so if you have an issue like this you can always um, reach out to us and then we'll help you fix it as soon as possible so until we see you on the next tutorial ensure you keep staying safe and have a fantastic time bye